2020 was a brutally challenging year for many people, yet my wife and I decided to buy our first house. Without seeing it first. Due to lockdowns, we bought the property without ever seeing more than a couple of photos of it. It's over 600 miles away from where we live, so viewing the property was not an option. It's a bit of a 2020 themed house. Uh, okay, so it's not actually a house, it's a 250 year old watermill on an island, far from any city. It's been derelict for around 20 years and is in pretty poor condition. It has power, but no water supply. The island doesn't have a town water supply as, well, there isn't a town. Like 2020, there's some exciting features, but mostly it's a tale of ruin and destruction. That being said, 2021 is looking to be a better year for everyone, and for the mill as well. Externally, the roof looks a little rough, though most of the slate portion is still intact. There's just one area of slate that is particularly bad. The kiln's asbestos tiles have mostly blown off, allowing a flock of pigeons to live in it. The grain hoist on the front of the building is almost ready to fall off, as the beams supporting it are in extremely poor condition. The walls were repointed with cement in the 1980s, and there are patches of cement on the walls inside as well. This is exacerbating the damp issues inside the building as the only place moisture has to escape through the thick stone walls is the lime mortar inside. The mill still has its water wheel, or at least some of it, and the mill lathe that would have once supplied water to the wheel is mostly intact. We have rights to run water down the mill lathe to the wheel, but no rights over the weir that once controlled the flow to the lathe and wheel. The water wheel is still attached to the original gears that would have driven the millstones. Water mills with their original workings are incredibly rare, especially mills of this age. Our mill is mostly intact, which is exciting, really exciting. Although everything is rusty, moldy, or both. On the positive side, you can still see grease on the equipment, despite the fact it hasn't run for around 70 years. Wood beetles, worms, and fungi have unfortunately destroyed a lot of the timber in the building, not just damaging the historic equipment, but also making the floors incredibly unsafe. The millstones are still in place, along with much of the other machinery that the mill needed to operate. It's like a really poorly kept museum. Many of the floor beams on the mid floor have rotted to the point where they no longer even meet the walls. The floorboards crumble to dust when you touch them. Every wall has mold or fungus on it, as every window is either missing or damaged far beyond repair. The island has a cool, wet climate with a lot of wind, so the whole building is full of damp from rain blowing in. The cement pointing on the exterior walls gives it little way to escape. On the upper floor, the roof leaks at one end, so the floors are in even worse condition there. Most of the historic wood has rotted or been eaten away completely. Bird crap covers everything. We bought the property as is, which includes tons of the previous owner's random stuff on every floor. There's piles of it for us to clear out. Nothing is salvageable as everything is covered in rodent or bird droppings or it's just moldy from the dampness. The whole building smells unbelievably bad inside. There are mountains of bird droppings in the kiln. The wind blows the stench straight through into the main section of the mill to mingle with the smell of rot and mould. The yard has not escaped either. It's full of dumped junk and even an abandoned car. We bought the mill as a project. A big project. We'll be documenting the repair, restoration and rebuild on this channel as we go. Our plan is to turn it into a beautiful family home doing all the work ourselves, the ultimate DIY project. There's a lot of challenges ahead, both with the building and the logistics of being hundreds of miles and multiple ferry crossings from building supplies suitable for historic buildings. Immediately, we're going to work on clearing out the ground floor and boarding the property up as we try to reduce the dampness in the building's fabric. 
we're waiting for permission from the council to repair and replace the roof, which will be our first major step on the project. I hope you'll consider subscribing to follow along with the project and watch our progress in bringing this beautiful old mill back to life.